All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week, I'm at Falcon Lakes Golf Club in Baser, Kansas, a newer golf course where we're playing some pre-1935 Hickory golf. If you saw my Metamora Fields Gutty Golf course vlog where it was pretty windy, wait till you see this one. This was the second annual Kansas Sunflower Hickory Open, sponsored by the Kansas City Area Hickory Golfers. I'll talk a little bit more about that group as we go. And here's what's in the bag for this round, sponsored by Stewart and Jacoby. As it is a pre-1935 Hickory round, I'm using my primary place at a pre-1935 clubs. We've got six irons, my Tom Stewart RTJ putter, and I've actually trimmed those brassies down to one, the splice neck. Here's the scorecard for Falcon Lakes. We're playing from the gold tees, which is about 5,500 yards for 18. And here's number one. It's a par five, 420 yards with a pretty tight fairway close to the green. But we have the wind behind us here. Let's see what we can do with it. The Sunflower Hickory Open is a scramble format. And here are my other two partners. This is Barry Herbert, co-founder of the Kansas City Area Hickory Golfers. There's me, also co-founder of the Kansas City Area Hickory Golfers. And here's Chris Harriman, whom you might remember from my round at Swope Memorial in Kansas City in 2021. And I don't waste any time with the highlights. This is probably the shot of the round right here. 306 yards with the wind behind us, but Chris had to put nice contact on that. You saw a nice smooth swing there. He's come a long way, in my opinion, since we played at Swope Memorial. The lessons are paying off for him. So yeah, scramble format means that we're going to take the best of the three shots we put out there, and uh, that's what you're going to see today. You're not going to, I'm not going to waste any time with any of the shots that we didn't take. There's a nice lag putt from Barry. And we're sitting pretty here on number one. With a nice short putt for birdie. See if we can convert. There you go. And we can. So that's a great start. Here's the second, par four, 287 yards. And this is where the fun begins. We're going straight into the wind now. You don't see red numbers on this channel too often, but there you go, we're minus one. I'm using the Tom Stewart driving iron, trying to keep this low underneath the wind. And that was actually our best tee shot. Not too far, but uh, in the fairway. This wind was unrelenting. It actually picked up, believe it or not, on the back nine. And if you don't like wind, or you're not used to playing in wind, you're just going to have a hard time playing golf in the Midwest in spring and early summer. That's just all there is to it. So we're trying to make the most of it here. Trying to keep the ball low. That was actually a, a, a shot that got away from Chris a little bit, but it got us up on the green. Still, we've got a lengthy par putt here. And obviously in a scramble format, par or better is what you, you have to get if you want to contend. So now we're sitting with the putt a little longer than we'd like for bogey. Now there's my contribution to the day. Save bogey with that one. All right, number three, par three, 116 yards. Pretty straightforward shot on a non-windy day. But when the wind's in your face, like this, <laughs> it gets interesting. Now Chris hit that a little fat, but uh, still the wind just ate it up. Fortunately, Barry got some nice contact on that one. And we've got a relatively medium range putt for par here, but I'm feeling it today. All right, moving on to number four, par four, 355 yards. Another hole that goes straight into the wind here. Using the Tom Stewart driving iron to keep this low. And pretty much did what I was trying to do. Pushed it a little right though, to the right side of the fairway. Fortunately, it was sitting up in the rough enough for Chris to get his mashie on it. And he got pretty good contact here, actually better than he expected from 165 yards out, and the ball skimmed just over the back of the green. Still put us in a good position here. I'm using the McGregor Popular B Mashy Niblick to chip this up. And it trickled past the hole a little further than I wanted, but I'm feeling pretty confident with the putter right now. And that's three in a row. Who is this guy? All right, number five, par five, 460 yards. Chris using his mid iron here. 
and exactly what he's trying to do. Keep it low, straight ahead in the fairway. So 310 out, again using the Tom Stewart driving iron to keep this low, but that was a little too low. Conditions were fairly fast and firm in the fairways, so I got some roll out there, but uh, not quite what we wanted. And this ended up being our best shot out of three. Chris ended up pulling that one over here into the weeds. But did manage to get that out with his niblick and get it up on the green. Lengthy par putt here. Barry's effort got us close, but not quite. This is a shorter one than the last three. Should be able to make this one, right? Nope. But the streak had to end at some point. It's just unfortunate that it was a double bogey there on a par five. All right, moving on to number six, par four, 333 yards. We ended up having to take Barry's drive here because Chris and I both had trouble off the tee hitting our shots OB. This one was short, but in the fairway. Chris is using his mid iron here from 210 out. Got real nice contact there. Pushed it just a little bit, but pretty much pin high. And then managed this tricky pitch over the bunker. And he'll just take it from here to get us back on the par train. All right, number seven, par four, 315 yards. Chris opted for his mashie here, figuring uh, that it would put us in a good position for our second shot, and it did. Only 60 yards from the green here. And none of us were really happy with our approaches into this green. This was our best, trickling off the back and leaving us with a lengthy birdie putt here. And that's about as much as I can show you from this hole because the camera conked out on me, but we two putt from there for a bogey. All right, number eight, par three, 141 yards. Wind was wreaking havoc with our tee shots on this one, as you can see here, but that one held the green. And I'm hoping the hot putter can get us close. This was a tricky putt. And I do believe that's about as close as you can get without actually making it. So that was a tap in for par, taking us to number nine, par four, 325 yards. Chris actually played this course a few days prior, so he knew that if he kept it left, he could cut this hole in half pretty much distance-wise. And so that's what he tried to do here, using his mashie. And uh, got us 35 yards short of the hole here, so pretty good drive even though we're off in the rough. Did make for a tricky chip up to the green, but that one held the fringe. And then Barry got us pretty close here. That's a good and then he tapped that in for par. We had some ups and downs there on the front nine, but not too bad. Three over par for a 39. Hoping we can keep things going on the back nine. Plays about the same length as the front, 2791. Here's number 10, par four, 275 yards. Tricky tee shot for me and Chris being over the pond and into the wind, but Barry, being an octogenarian, gave us a break here on this hole, so he, we were able to take his drive from the red tees on the other side of the pond. This one put us 145 yards short of the hole, and uh, I tried my little cut shot with my driving iron where I tried to basically hit a, a, a low slice, and uh, that worked out okay, got us in the back of the green here. But this was a tricky green sloping back to front. And uh, you can tell here we're, we're in trouble. Needed to give all these shots a lot more oomph going back up the hill. 
So this is our fifth for bogey. And uh, it lipped in and out. And you can see the wind picking up back here on the back nine. So an unfortunate way to start the back with a double bogey. Number 11, par 4, 329 yards. Chris ditched the hat at this point because it kept blowing off his head. Used his mashie here and hit this higher than he wanted. So he lost some distance, but it's straight and in the fairway. Here, 155 yards out, and I'm using the Tom Stewart driving iron and did exactly what I was trying to do there by keeping it low and running it up onto the green. Oh, I just crawled over that. That's my Tom Morris mashie right there. Again, another green from our position that was sloping back to front, so it was hard to get these chips close to the hole here. And Barry's two putts here ended up being our best for bogey. There you go. Number 12, par 4, 369 yards. It's another hole that if you know where to go on the left side, you can cut some distance off. Though I'm pretty confident that Chris was not trying to go this far left. We were almost out of bounds. Chris is basically standing out of bounds here, but the ball was safe. And then he hit a beautiful shot here with his mashie off a tough lie. Yeah, and I, I was just saying there that uh, I didn't even want to take a shot there to try to beat that one. I felt like that was good enough. At this point in the round two with the wind, we're just trying to get into the clubhouse in one piece, basically. Would have liked that chip to come up a little bit closer to the hole but Barry was pretty clutch for us here on the back nine and on the front nine for that matter and getting us relatively close and then tapping in a lot of these for bogey or par. So it's cool, everybody's got a role in a scramble. You kind of you know settle into those roles as the round goes on and uh, play off each other's strengths when you can. And here's our strength off the tee was Chris with the brassy. Uh, that's perfect. Another beautiful shot there. That was about 246 yards, if I remember right. This one was a little aggressive on the downswing. Ended up pulling that shot to the left, but the rough over here was pretty thin. And this is my favorite shot in hickory golf. Basically driving it into a hill and chipping it up using the mashie, and that's what I was able to do there. Well, that's a birdie putt. Then I'm hoping I got a little magic left in the putter to knock this birdie putt down. And I do. Number 14, par 4, 279 yards. Finally here in the back nine, we're getting to move with the wind at our backs. So Chris is using his brassy here. And you see the counter, so something good's going to happen here. So from our vantage point, it looked like it basically was right up on the green. Ended up trickling over the back. So 285 yards. Barry got us pretty close here with this chip. Ran past the hole more than we wanted to. So these were the two trickiest putts of the round, I think, just based on where we were with the wind. Look at that. Definitely the uh, height of the wind speed in this round. But we get away with a par there. Number 15, par 359 yards. Let's talk a little bit about the Kansas City area hickory golfers, the sponsors of this event. So Barry is a co-founder of the group, along with Mike Needleman, who's the organizer of this event. And uh, I'm also a co-founder of the group. Uh, back in January 2020, Barry, Mike, and I met at a Bob Evans restaurant and hatched the plan to start a Kansas City Area Hickory Golfer group. And uh, we were looking forward to having this event in April of 2020, but COVID canceled that. I'll interrupt myself real quick. Say number 16 here, par 5, 470 yards. Wanted to show you this drive from Barry. Even though it's not the one we took. Beat that, you guys. <laughs>
Probably one of his best of the round. Uh, but as I was saying, yeah, this event started then in 2021. My wife and I had already moved to Connecticut by that point, so I missed the inaugural event, but I uh, was very glad to have been able to be back uh, to come to this second annual event. And they've always been, Barry and Mike have always considered me part of the group, even though I'm no longer in the Kansas City area. And I appreciate that. So you see, we're, we're on another par five here, 470 yards. Another great drive from Chris to put us in good position. I didn't really help us out too much with my approach into the green, but nice chip up from Chris. And then Barry almost drilled a birdie putt for us. We took his tap in for par though. And we're moving on to 17, par three, 118 yards. Chris had a feeling that one of us was going to get a hole-in-one on this hole. And uh, that didn't happen, I'll just tell you right now. But uh, Chris and I both chunked our tee shots. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever uh, premonition Chris had about hole-in-one, it was actually uh, the opposite. So we took Barry's drive there, which was, a, which was a good shot. We were hoping to get a little bit closer for our par putt. But... Barry got us almost there. Nice putt there. And then a tap in for bogey. We're moving on to number 18, par four, 295 yards. Straight into the wind once again. And Chris had the right idea here using his mid iron to keep this one low. So 110 yards out. I think Chris probably would have wanted this shot back. He opted to go high here into this green, but uh, the wind just ate it up. Ended up knocking it down well short. Fortunately, bounced back with a great chip here, leaving us with this short one for par, which was pretty tricky considering the wind, but we knocked it down. All right, so that'll wrap it up from Falcon Lakes Golf Club at the second annual Sunflower Hickory Open. Hope you enjoyed this windy round of Hickory Golf. We shot plus four on the back nine for a total of plus seven. Ended up taking second in the scramble division, so we were pretty happy with that considering the conditions. That'll do it for this week, folks. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back next week with another course vlog. And in the meantime, here's one from the archive for you to enjoy. And as always, if you liked what you saw here, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. Thanks again, folks. We'll see you next week. Take care.